If you could turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 13, this is where I'm going to take my scripture from today and just begin to expound on, on what is spoken here. 2 Kings chapter 13, and we're going to believe the Lord for just a wonderful, wonderful presence. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. I never quite know when I am inside of a new church or begin to experience things what exactly the, the method is inside of the church. 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse 14 says this. Now Elijah was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elijah said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said unto the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And Elijah put, er, er, Joash put his hand upon it. And Elijah put his hands upon Joash's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elijah said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance in the arrow of deliverance from Syria for thou shalt smite the Syrians Aphek, till thou have consumed them and he said take the arrows and he took them and he said unto the king of Israel smite upon the ground and he smote there and he stayed he smote thrice and he stayed and the man of God was wroth with him angry with him and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times, then hadst thou smitten Syria, till thou hast consumed it, whereas now thou shalt only smite them but three times. Strong words when you begin to think about this scripture here. Can we lift our hands up and just pray for the word of God this morning? Jesus, we are so thankful for what you have delivered to us in this place, God. I pray that you would open every heart and every mind, Jesus. Begin to speak to us, Lord. And God, I pray that any conviction would not become offense. But Jesus, through you, Lord, we would draw closer to your presence and your authority, God. That through you today, households would be released into your kingdom, God. Lord, deliverance would occur in every atmosphere, Lord, that the Holy Ghost would fall upon every person in this place, and we believe it today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. You can be seated here today. We see in this scripture here that there are two characters, Elijah and Joash. Joash, the king of Israel, has failed to depart from the sins of the house of Jeroboam. If you'll read the chapters prior to this, you will see that he was involved in many different sins. But the biggest one was idolatry, beginning to build idols instead of walking to the one true God and seeking out the one true God who could truly save them. And instead, he built various idols, thinking that these idols would be the thing that could save him and his people from various illness and sickness and enemies and disease that was around them. Joash failed to depart from this enemy, failed to depart from this idolatry. And he realizes that Elijah is about to die according to this scripture. We see that Joash seeks him out and he pleads with help with the Syrian armies, speaking of the strength of the Lord's army and speaking of maybe seeing Elijah be caught up into heaven just as Elijah had been before him. And so Joash is seeking out this prophet, wondering what he can do for him to begin to deliver him from the enemy that had been surrounding them for far too long. You see, idolatry is setting up other gods, other things inside of our lives, beginning to trust in them more than we trust in the one true God. It becomes so easy in America to begin to trust in our money or our finances or our assurances or our family or the people around us to begin to bring us comfort and move us forward. But there always comes a time in our lives where we have to begin to push past that and say, God, I am putting all of this in your hands because it is through your authority that my family is going to begin to walk forward and have authority inside of this life in Jesus' name. And so Elijah is about to die, and Elijah tells Joash to shoot one arrow. We read that Elijah said the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of the deliverance from Syria. 
For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Elijah's telling him, sir, this one arrow that I'm having you shoot out this window, there's something powerful about it. That when you shoot this out the window, it's the deliverance of the Lord that is going out. And I am giving you the ability to begin to conquer the enemy that has surrounded you for far too long. But not only that, we see that Joash was handed the rest of the arrows. And he was told to smite the ground with the rest of these arrows. Now there's some debate in what this word truly means. What smite truly means. In Hebrew, it means to be struck by a weapon in battle, to be smitten. To me, what Elijah is telling Joash here, whether Joash physically shot these arrows out of the house or whether he grabbed a hold of them and began to pound the ground with his fist, is he was telling him these arrows represent you smiting the enemy, killing the enemy, defeating him so he can no longer come back into your life and take hold of your city or your community or where you are at. Elijah's giving him the authority and the power of the Lord in the midst of this, even with all the sins he had committed prior to this. And so whether he shot or literally struck the ground, we know that the fact is he had more than three arrows to use at this particular time. We know he did not just have three arrows in his hand to begin to take hold of what the prophet of God was telling him to do. But unfortunately, we see that Joash only struck the ground Three different times. You would think that this man who was just handed an arrow and said, this is the deliverance of the Lord from your enemy, would begin to say, man, there's a few other enemies out there. And these arrows that you have handed me, I believe I can begin to defeat them as well. And so I'm going to smite the ground until I name off every single neighbor, ne enemy that is in my neighborhood. I'm going to begin to smite the ground until I begin to defeat every enemy that is inside of my household in Jesus' name. But unfortunately, Joash doesn't get to that point. He only strikes the ground three different times. And we see that the man of God was angry with him. Rightly so. And he said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had completely destroyed it. But now you will strike them only three times. In the next verse, we see that Elijah dies. There is no more seeking the prophet for help. But now that power has been set out. Joash was fearful this prophet would die. Joash was fearful of the enemy that had encompassed him inside of his life. The city that was around, he saw their numbers and began to think, man, we're never going to be able to defeat them or overcome them or rise above them with this enemy or, or this military that we have inside of our place here. Joash was so worried about being overcome by the enemy that he began to strike the ground out of fear and not out of faith. He took what the prophet had given to him and he just began to strike out of fear saying, I'm hopeless, I don't know what else to do and I'm just going to strike the ground these three times and prophet, please, uh, I just want you to pour this. I don't want to be consecrated to you. I don't want to be consecrated to God. I want to keep my idols up. I want to keep my life going the way that it is and I'm just going to lightly tap the ground these three different times and hope and pray that because the pastor preaches that my life will be a little bit different or because the pastor prays that my life will be a little bit Bit different. But what I'm here to tell you today is that God is handing out some arrows to every single person in this room. And he is telling you, I am giving you the authority to take hold of every enemy that is inside of your life. I'm giving you the authority to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost inside of this service here today. I'm giving you the authority to dance in freedom, free from every addiction of drugs and alcohol that is inside of this place. And believe me, if you will begin to take hold of those arrows that aren't just from the pastor or the preacher, and you will begin to smite the ground and say, God, that is me. I need that inside of my life. And he will begin to do that for you today in Jesus' name. We cannot be satisfied with striking the ground three times. But my goodness, 
this, we must begin to strike over and over and over again until every enemy is defeated in this place before we go back out. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, he is in this place. The Lord of deliverance is in this place. I stand here as the Elijah saying, I am handing you the arrow of the Lord. I tell you, it's an arrow of deliverance. I tell you, it's an arrow of authority inside of your life. It's an arrow of seeking out the presence of God and seeing your household change forever. It's an arrow for every lost one inside of your family and your household that is not in church right now. Don't give up, but keep pounding the ground with those arrows. Keep seeking the Lord before his face. And believe me, he will begin to work inside of your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 19, 26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. We serve the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the Almighty God, the Avenger, the Bridegroom, the Consuming Fire, Creator, Deliverer, Everlasting Father, the Eternal King, Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, the Help, the Healer, my High Tower, the Hiding Place, the Holy Judge, the Light, Yahweh, Sovereign, Majesty, Potter, Refuge, the Prince, the Protector, the Rock, the Savior, the Son, the Song, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Saboha, Yahweh Nisi, the true God, the true pasture, the wonderful, the one true God. Believe me this morning, God has a title and a degree way beyond what we can have in this world that is saying you have the arrow to conquer your situation and he wants to begin to move in the midst of that in Jesus' name this morning morning. I know that we have already danced and praised God and struck the ground three different times, but I'm believing this morning we can go a little bit beyond that and begin to see him do some wonderful things inside of our situations. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see that Joash took the promises of God and he struck the ground out of fear. God is in this place, and he has given you his word. There's likely a Bible sitting beside you on your lap, on your phone, wherever you are at. But he has given you a book full of promises that he's bringing to you this morning. These promises are faith speak, and they say you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost if you do not have it. And if you do have it, you shall be refilled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It says that the sick will be healed, and that any spiritual deadly thing shall not be able to harm them. Your sins can be washed clean inside of this service, and you can be saved before you leave these doors and walk out to a world of uncertainty and wars and rumors of wars in so many different places places but the fear begins to creep in and says I don't need to receive the Holy Ghost or I might need to receive it or else I'm going to go to hell so I have to absolutely receive this and fear begins to say I need to be healed or th from this disease or it's going to kill me or I, I might be able to get these spiritual attacks out of my head in this service today but the nightmares they're going to return tonight and, and begin to creep into my life over and over again or my sins are too large to ever be forgiven the hurt is always there I I will never make it to heaven. The internet says there is too much evidence disproving the existence of God. So how can I believe that he is true and, and there? But you have come to a church or a place where you can begin to uncover the answers to every one of those remarks. And believe me, God doesn't just want you here because of fear or fearing your life or fearing the world or fearing hell or fearing what might happen to you if you are not healed of the sickness that is inside of your body. 
if we come here and strike those three times and that's fine, it might cure you for the service. But if you're willing to say, God, you said it inside of your word. The man speaking today said it across the platform. So I am going to strike the ground this morning so that I can leave this church building in authority, being completely healed of whatever it may be, believing in your deliverance, God, being filled with the gift of your Holy Ghost inside of my life. God, I'm believing in my household. I'm believing it for my city. We must begin to take on that challenge of saying, God, why am I here today? Is it out of fear or is it out of faith because if we have come here with faith this morning I believe what our pastor says that this city is going to be ours this city is going to be God's this city is going to be used by him and his spirit will flow through these streets because the enemy has no authority over an apostolic person of God who knows how to go before God and smite the promises and say God I believe in this promise of your word and I'm going to pray it until it begins to happen in my household, in Jesus' name. Joash stuck out of fear, but you don't have to strike out of fear this morning, in Jesus' name. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Meaning you don't have to leave this place with the thoughts in your head wondering is this truly going to last or take care of my situation or my needs. But you can leave here with a sound mind saying, God, you did it once. You can do it again. God, you did that on a Sunday morning. You can do it in my household. God, I can dance and praise and sing your glory in my house just as I did that Sunday morning. And Lord, that fear can begin to go inside of my household. I believe that that would be wonderful to do this morning if we can pray against every piece of fear that might be in this building, every piece of fear that might be in this room today. Let's just lift our hands. God, we believe you for that today. Jesus, that you are removing every fear that is inside of our lives, that we have come here before you in faith, knowing that you are the one true God. I pray for every person that is here, Lord, that they would not be scared of the world or of Satan or of the things around them, but they would understand and there's authority inside of their lives to take hold of every aspect that is there and give you the glory for that, Jesus. I believe that every person in this room will leave without fear inside of their lives and that faith will begin to grow and increase in their household. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Can we praise him for that this morning and give him some glory? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Praise your mighty name, God. Hallelujah, let it be lifted off, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is here to do something wonderful this morning. I want to share with you two stories before I close. But I do want to say that if this is your first time in a Pentecostal church, or an atmosphere like this, you can look it up in scripture and it's very real and true. And this is how scripture speaks about us worshiping God and praising his name. It's not weird. It's not crazy. I mean, it may seem that way to the world, but truly it's doing something in the hearts and the minds of people that are here. Psychology proves it and the word of God speaks it in Jesus' name. So I would encourage you to seek God before you leave this place, to find him before you leave those doors, because my goodness, he wants to be inside of your life or your household in Jesus' name. I want to share two personal stories that hopefully will resound with some of you in this place about striking the ground and how we can take things a little bit further. I was in Belize in 2019. I believe we have a couple photos here that will begin to show you the area that we were in. We were in Belize in 2019, and we had to paint this church that you see over here on the right-hand side. It was in a very remote area. And it was actually so remote that we couldn't even take our bus back into where it was at. We had to get out and walk to this location. When we got to the location, we had to step across the, these little two-by-fours that were spread across the ditch that had a, a sewer running through it. So you didn't want to fall off the boards because you would end up inside of this puddle or, of, of stuff that you don't want to be involved with. And we got to this church, and they didn't have any running water they didn't have any medical facilities. They didn't have anything to clean yourself or, or cleanse yourself. And it was hotter than, than all get out inside of this atmosphere. 
And so we, we get to the church, and we, we were there to paint the church for the people. And so we started putting on this paint on the walls of the church, and, and we were busy working away. And it was about halfway through the day when all of a sudden this young little teenager come, came running up to me and, and tugged on my shirt tail. And I couldn't understand here. I, I don't speak Spanish. And so I had to grab the interpreter and say, hey, what, what is going on with this young lady? And she expressed to the interpreter that she had two teenage sisters that were back in her household and they were extremely sick to the point where they, they weren't able to move and they were struggling to just make it through every single day. And she wanted us to pray for them because she had saw that we were there around the church and she believed that God could heal her sisters who were in the midst of all this troubling and pain. The first thought that went through my head as a chaperone with a bunch of young people around me is, my goodness, this sounds very contagious if it's already spread through two different people. And is it okay to go to this household because we might get jumped by the mob? And I don't know what, what kind of neighborhood this is or what it's like to go into these places and what we should do. And so we just began to think about it and, and pray about it. And God, what, what should we do in the midst of this circumstance? And we decided that we would go to this household and pray for these two young ladies, letting the Lord lead us. We felt that he had spoken to us and that he would heal them if we went to this household in Jesus' name. So we began being led down these tiny alleys that were so tight, they were shoulder to shoulder. And we're, we're squeezing between these rough buildings with planks on the side. And, and this is actually the, the next photo that I'm going to talk about in a second. But, but we were squeezing through these little places. And, and we got to this household. And I don't have a picture of the household up here or what it looked like. But it was this very tiny room, probably just uh, 10 feet by maybe 6 feet. It was very squishy and tight inside of there. And so in order to fit two beds inside of this household... They had to hang hammocks from corner to corner. So they hung this hammock from corner to corner, and there was a gal uh, laying on the hammock here, and there was a gal laying on the hammock here. This gal here was sweating profusely, and she was coughing, and she was just moving. You could tell, just horribly sick. She sat up as we walked in the room, but the one that was on the hammock over here, she stayed perfectly still. You could tell that she was sweating and that, that she was very, very sick, but she couldn't even open her eyes to look at us. I don't even know if she knew that we were there inside of that room. And again, the fear tried to creep into my life of saying, man, you know, uh, are we going to get sick from these gals? It looks like there's an illness in here. I don't know if we can do this. I'm just a, a guy from the middle of Wyoming, and I don't even know if I have the authority to lay hands on somebody and see them healed and, and pray for them. I don't know, God, what, what can we do in the midst of this circumstance? And I was thinking about taking the arrow and just tapping it three times and saying, let's just pray around the building real quick and then get out of here so that we don't get the sickness or the illness. But God quickly convicted me and said, no, I have brought you here to lay hands on the sick so that they shall recover. So we went into this room, and myself and a group of students, there, there were probably about four of us that could squeeze in that room. We laid hands on these sick people. No way to cleanse ourselves. No way to wash our hands when we were done with this. Not knowing what disease they had. And we began to pray for them in Jesus' name. We began to speak the word of God over them. And take the arrow that God had given to us and strike the ground over and over and over again. And they were not instantly healed inside of that household. But we walked out. And we continued praying, striking the ground as we walked out of that household. We continued praying through that night and into the next day. And that following night, we had a service that was in that church there that we had just painted. And inside of that service were two young teenagers who were no longer coughing, no longer sweating, were alive and well, and were able to praise the glory of God. You see, our faith and trust must be in the Lord. Because there are no, sometimes no other means. And in this country, there was no other means for them to turn to. They didn't have a doctor. They didn't have a physician. They didn't have medications. But they knew that they must turn to the authority of the Lord of God. That, that our Lord would be the one that would speak into their household and into their lives. And possibly take care of something that nobody in this world could. In Jesus' name. We learned to strike the ground. One more story is that we were in Florida, kind of a similar trip. Here we're praying for people in the midst of Hialeah. I was speaking to a brother this morning, and he said that's where he's from in Jesus' name. So if you know this brother, you can't begin to, to speak about him. But Hialeah 
And we were in the midst of these areas, and much like you all do down on your church uh, service in Greensboro on the corner, we were handing out food to people, but it wasn't just a normal food line. We also desired to hand out spiritual food in Jesus' name. And so this church would go and collect all the food that they could, and they would begin to hand it out to all sorts of people. And as they came in these lines, we'd begin to pray for them. And numerous received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And numerous were healed and delivered from situations inside of their lives. But I noticed there was this young Hispanic man that I, I couldn't speak to. Because again, I don't speak Spanish. And, and he was there and he was praying for people. And he was eccentric. And he was doing the, the work of the Lord. Just doing wonderful things as a young man of God. And I was so impressed by what he was doing there. And we went to this service inside of their church congregation that Friday night, and I was preaching a message, and he was standing beside me, and he ended up being an interpreter for what I was speaking. It was just crazy how God began to work this out. And it was amazing because he stood there with a smile on his face, and he preached with the authority of the Lord, and he began to just see that the walls fall down inside of people's lives because of the authority he was speaking inside of that room. I loved being next to this young man. It began to encourage me to become better at what I was doing in the midst of those services. But I soon found out from the pastor. He, he came up to me after the service, and he said, you don't know that young man, do you? I said, no. He's like, you don't know. You haven't heard his story. I said, no, I haven't. He said, this young man is here in America illegally. He came here as a result of being involved in a cartel in Central America. He, before he was in the church, had walked up to numerous people, pointed a gun at them, and fired the gun, killing one after another after another. The man was a murderer. He was assassinating people in the midst of this cartel. He fled to America, and while here trying to become rich and make money, he bumped into an apostolic person like many of you inside of this room. And soon he began to get involved inside of a Bible study. And soon he began to find the one true God that could deliver him from his entire past. He didn't have to serve prison time, but my goodness, he came seeking God. And through repentance and being baptized in Jesus' name, God wiped every one of those sins clean. In Jesus' name, to the point where he could stand before a congregation and begin to preach to them and say, God has something so much more for you because he has done it inside of my life and I believe he can do it inside of your life. I share that story with you here this morning because I want to tell you that no matter what sin you have committed in your past, no matter how big you think it might be, no matter how bad you think you have treated other people, God can forgive you in the midst of the service. So if you think you are unworthy to begin to strike the ground with the promises of God this morning. Let me tell you, you are not unworthy in that through repentance and baptism, God can completely wipe that free from yourself so that you can begin to strike the ground on the promises of God. Thank you, music team, for coming. If we could stand here this morning, let me say this, that this service, I do not have physical arrows to hand you but you already have the arrows of the Lord in your hand or beside you in the Bible that is around you. This morning, I want to encourage you to pick up the word of God and imagine the prophet handing those arrows to you and saying, this first arrow is the promise of deliverance. But God wants to take care of every need that you have. This first arrow, it's just the beginning, and I'm going to help you fire it. I'm going to come alongside and help you fire it. But these next arrows, it's up to you to begin to come down to this platform and seek them out and say, God, I know the prophet has helped me get this far, but now it's up to you to begin to do what you want inside of my life. We've got rid of fear, and now this morning, faith can begin to pour across this sanctuary in Jesus' name. If you are here and this is your first church service, God is in our midst and he's wanting to commune with you and let you know what his spirit can do. If you're struggling with disease, come on, there's arrows of healing in this service this morning. We dance
rights and liberty as this service began to kick off. And we can keep that going. We can keep seeking the presence of the Lord this morning. But let me tell you, don't give up with just a minute long prayer, but seek God this morning until you have struck the ground enough times to take care of the needs inside of your life. I begin to open this altar if you want to come down. I would encourage you. We have people that can pray with you, that can pray alongside you and help you seek those arrows for your life. Come on, don't be discouraged. Don't be fearful of what God wants to do here. Don't be fearful of that first arrow, but come on, begin to seek him out and say, God, I've never heard of this message before. I've never seen worship like this before, but my goodness, God, I know you can do something in my life. I'm not here by coincidence, God, but I'm here for a purpose, Lord. I know that you're pouring it out into my soul. Come on, just begin to lift up your hands. Begin to cry out to him in this morning service. Begin to seek him out just as he has handed you an arrow and said, I have given you a promise to move inside of your life. Begin to speak it out to him and say, God, this morning is where I draw the line. This morning is where I say enough is enough of the enemy in this world. God, this morning I desire you and I seek your face in Jesus' name. As the worship team continues to play, I pray that you would ask God and come down here and seek him out. There's people to pray with you if you need prayer. We'll pray and seek God with you in Jesus' name. Let's search him out in Jesus' name.